Hi everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia. This is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today I am joining you for episode 17. I'm so glad to be filming today. It's good to be back. It actually has again been three weeks since I recorded a podcast episode and that was just because of timing wise, uh, because of the testnet I was doing and the release of that pattern. I thought it would make more sense for this episode to come today as opposed to last Monday. But I posted a video last Monday about hand dyed yarn. But today is a regular podcast episode. We have four finished objects, including this absolute beauty that I am wearing. We have a couple of works in progress that I do really want to talk about. And then if we have time, I will talk about a couple new cast-ons, but I might just save those for the next podcast episode if it makes more sense to do that. And we just have a couple of acquisitions. So yeah, uh, if you want to find me on other social media, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram and also on Ko-Fi at The Woolly Worker. On Ravelry, you will see very detailed notes and more details on the sizes I've made or ne needles I've used. On Instagram, you can see stories where you can see behind the scenes and I guess more uh, updates. And then on Ko-Fi, that's just if you wanted to support the channel in a monetary way by buying me just the price of a cup of coffee or more if you felt so inclined. And I really, really appreciate it when you guys decide to support me over there and reward the hard work that goes into making those videos. It's absolutely not necessary and I just love your uh, views and comments. That's also a way to support the channel. But yeah, uh, if you want to support the work, you can do so on Ko-Fi or Ko-Fi. I... I think I'm going to keep saying coffee because that's how I would say it in French. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is the Alder sweater, what I am wearing today from Rebecca Klo or the Crea Bea. You may have seen her podcast episode on the Friday. You may have already bought the pattern. It's been really, really popular and has gotten a lot of hype. And I think with reason, and I guess I am part of driving that hype because I test knitted this. I was so happy to be selected. I loved it ever since I laid eyes on her first sample slash prototype because she never actually finished that one. It has been a lot of hard work to get this knit done. It is an all over texture. It's not color work in the sense that you're working with two colors in one row. You're only ever working with one color and then you're slipping stitches similarly to mosaic knitting. So it's really not complicated and you get the hang of the stitch pattern really fast after just doing your swatch and the instructions are extremely clear but I'll get more on that later. Um, I wanted to talk about this pattern because I was also extremely lucky to have been chosen or asked by Rebecca to participate in her photo shoot for the official pattern photo. So you may have already seen me on the project page or I think also in the PDF possibly. You will see this green sample. The yarn that I've used is Retrosaria Vovo for the green and then the white is Rawork Undyed in the color Sand and it is their sport weight yarn. And Vovo is also classified as a sport, but um, I think both of these, uh, the sand is definitely wool and spun and it really plumps up. And then Vovo, I think is just a regular worsted spun yarn, but I have a pretty loose tension and I knitted this on 3.75 millimeter needles, same as Rebecca, and I was able to knit gauge. I made sure to really like block the sweater after working the first part to make sure that I was on gauge. And I knitted size three and I absolutely adore the fit on me. There's a little bit of ease. This is where my uh, side is. So a little bit of ease and the sleeves are really tapered, but not tight at all. So you got that room at the bicep and then still a bit of room uh, here. But you will be able to see all of that in the photos that I will be circulating on screen. There might be a lot of photos that I circulate this time, just because I'm so proud and so happy with them. Uh, Jasmine was the photographer, she has been photographing Rebecca's samples ever since she launched her first one a year ago. And yeah, it was a great day out, it was a beautiful sunny day, we went to Dean Village in Edinburgh, which is lovely. I'm super chuffed with my color choice. I could have gone for a neutral, but I decided to go for the wild card option. And I really wanted to try out this color to see what the fuss was all about and whether it would be a color that I would buy again. And the verdict is that I definitely like it. I think it's not like the best color ever. Like I'm not sold and, and will make a lot of new items in this, but it's definitely eye-catching and original and zesty. And I think it's, it's great to have this piece, especially for I guess autumn and spring because it's just a little bit different than the usual color palettes that we see. 
I chose to use my darker color as the main color and this is what the accents are done in but there's lots of samples from test knitters and otherwise Rebecca that I used white as the main color that also look gorgeous so just swatch and have fun with it. Let me know if you have plans to cast on your own outer sweater and what color combinations you're gonna pick. Uh, one of the test knitters had a hand dyed as the um, contrast color and then as her main color she used two strands of mohair held together. That, that was amazing, that is gorgeous. Um, I'll show a photo here because she was in the photo shoot as well, Rebecca. So yeah, my experience of knit exp knitting this pattern, I think it was influenced by the fact that I was a test knitter for it. There was a bit of a uh, pressure, uh, self-inflicted, because the deadline was really generous from Rebecca for the test knit. It was over eight weeks, uh, if not more, and it was just a lot. And the um, stitch pattern has no stockinette rows of like respite. There's a few knitting rows, but they also have like slip stitches in it so it's not completely mindless um, on the contrary because it is easy to accidentally slip or accidentally knit so you really had to pay attention pretty much the whole time I would say. Uh, some people might find that actually this kind of stitch pattern repetition is mindless but I didn't and there were some stitch decreases in the sleeve so I also had to pay attention a lot on the sleeves. I had to do half of them on magic loop which was a bit annoying as well and not in as much of a rhythm. You always had two balls of yarn attached to do all of this mosaic knitting. So overall I would say it was an involved knit, but the pattern itself was written perfectly. There were no issues in the test knit, like there was zero points where nobody knew what was going on and the instructions on how to incorporate the stitch in the raglan, which is lifted increases, the instructions were perfect and every, everything fell into place really easily. It was a compound raglan, so lots of care and detail has been put into the fit. And then the instructions for the sleeve decreases also were perfect. So you really weren't left on your own devices. You're able to create this piece that looks complicated, but is actually not complicated. It just takes a lot of work and effort, but you are rewarded with it, with a beautiful piece. So I'd say it's, a, a good knit. I would recommend the pattern but I would say know what you're getting into in terms of the commitment that it is to knit up this sweater because again like the sleeves are also all over so the only respite was when we were doing the ribbing. I'm really happy with my yarn choice. It was quite stiff at the beginning and I think the stitch pattern combined with the yarn that I chose which is rustic and um, non superwash woolly wool. Those two things combined made the sweater very stiff and sturdy and even thicker I guess as opposed to like a looser gauge because of the stitch the nature of the stitch pattern is, is there's decreases so it's gonna be quite tight and I, I just couldn't wait the entire time I just knew that something would happen when I would block it and I couldn't wait to block it to see the transformation and god it worked wonders the finished item is just really nice and flowy I think I have a video of it uh, being hung so I'll put that as well and it's really comfortable. I love the size of the sleeves and the crop of it. I like the shape of this garment. It's not your usual raglan. I feel like it almost has a more of a drop shoulder look almost. I don't know if that makes sense or why that would be the case but I, I, yeah uh, I'm not the biggest. Like, I, I prefer drop shoulders now than I do raglans but this is a really good raglan. So yeah it was a really good experience. I'm really happy the test net is over and I will not be signing up to any more test nets until the end of the year, taking another break uh, like I did over summer. So yeah, um, no more deadline nets for me because it really took over for a, a while and all I wanted was to cast on all my autumnal knits and I couldn't do that because I had to work on that. But it was all worth it in the end. I wouldn't change a thing. It's just that now I'm going to be focusing on my autumn knits, which you're going to be able to see in my finished objects and cast ons. Lastly, here's the cost of this project. The most expensive strand was the raw work, the white. That was, I believe, £15 a ball. And then the Vovo was pretty affordable. This actually took almost no yarn at all, especially the contrast color. I think for my size, size 3, I used, I want to say 400 of the white and 800 meters of the green. So that's really nice. And... Because it, it kind of looks like it would be half and half because you can see a lot of white and a lot of green. But the green, like, the white, the, the ball was just not 
d diminishing at all. Um, it just had so much in the tank, I guess. So maybe if you have any leftovers, you have 400 leftovers of DK, then you can use that for that. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more alders pop up and see what color combos people go for, especially if they use like some kind of hand dyed or tonals as part of the color palette. So uh, I think we can move on then to finished objects. I have three. I'll go to the other um, deadline knit that I did. So the context was that I participated in Sari Nordland's Summer Sock Cal. Spoiler alert, I didn't win or get picked for a prize, but that's fine. That's only part of the reason why people do cows. And I will show you my stack of socks there then. So here's all of them together. And it's not really easy to show this in an attractive way on camera, but I will sh share the, the photos that I took. I did uh, these ones first, the summer solstice socks, and then I did the Minerva, well, no, actually, those were the second one that was published, and I did this afterwards, the Minerva socks, and then the third pattern was the ruffle socks, and the uh, summer girl socks, and then the last one was the scrapbook socks, and I don't know if you can tell, but um, the toe was actually supposed to be in red, but I ran out of red, so I had to do mine in beige, but that's okay, I think... In my mind, because I know what it's supposed to look like, had I had enough red, it's a little annoying, but obviously because I use the yarn that is used all throughout anyway, it doesn't uh, shock too much. The pattern, at first I was worried because it had quite a high stitch count, even for the smallest size, and I usually do like 56, at most 64, and I usually do it on two millimeter needles, but it was quite a high stitch count. But because you're having this sort of herringbone And it's not like the stitches are in in a round, in a circle. They're actually going up and down. So when they do that, when they're going up and down, you're losing width. So it all worked out. I did these on two millimeter needles. And to be completely honest, they're not my favorite pair of socks either. And neither were the Minerva. So out of these four patterns I've done over the summer, uh, two of them I really liked. And two of them I'm like, uh, about. But it's nice to have a collection of them and that they, they're all tied in this color scheme. The pattern was lace, and I guess in that sense it was addictive because the sections were really small all the time. The heel is a short row heel, and I really didn't like doing that. It left a lot of holes despite my best efforts. I, in retrospect, would have preferred doing a fish lip kiss heel because it's also a method that helps you not disrupt the patterning that you do at the beginning. Or like, yeah, you don't have to disturb the stitch counts when you're doing those short row heels. But with a fish lip, at least it's more invisible and it fits me well, whereas this one I just wasn't sure. Then the other thing I didn't like about this pattern was that you have this red section in the middle where Sari tells you after you do the heel, she says, now do some red rows until you're X amount of centimeters away from the end of your foot so that you can end up with like the right amount of stripes so that you have your three stripes in the middle and that right after you have the toe. But that amount was so large, it was over 10 centimeters, that there was just so much scope for errors on where to measure. So when I, when I was putting this on my foot when it was halfway done, it was like, I have no idea when to start those stripes. And I was also running out of red at that point. So I decided to do very little red rows, starting my stripes, knowing that I would just make the toe section longer. And at that point, I still thought I would have red to do that. But then I ran out of red really quickly because I was weighing it on my scale and I was seeing that I would I would not be able to do the two socks. So I stopped this one halfway through, cast on the second one, and then I was doing them concurrently, which, again, just interrupted the flow and I didn't want to pick these up because I knew that I had to do yarn math with the amounts I had. And in the end, they're not even that equal because I couldn't do two rows of red here, I only did one. So, a bit of jiggery-pokery, but we got there in the end. And the other thing I wanted to say was that I didn't like that there were so many ends to weave in. It wasn't as easy, because especially here on this top part, the lace goes all over. Whereas here, the bottom of the foot doesn't have any lace. So to weave in your ends on this kind of 
all over lace with yarn overs, there's a lot of holes. And when you're doing magic loop, it leaves a gap at that like sort of ladder point. And if there's a yarn over just at the point where you're doing your magic loop separation, I just thought that it was sloppy, made me make a lot of tension woes, and I'm just not super proud of the the craftsmanship of this of these ones, but that's I guess I felt more strongly about that at the time, and now that I'm looking at these, they're a perfectly fine pair of socks. They're almost identical. They fit my foot really well, and they're a nice length. I quite like this length where it's not quite a long sock, not quite a shorty. I think I should write that down somewhere that this is the length I like for my socks. And like I said, I'm really happy to have my little set of socks, but I am disappointed that I ran out of the red. I do, uh, and also I'm disappointed that the red I use is Regia Four Ply Yak merino and the yak is just awful and pills brown which is not pretty so ups and downs in this summer sock cal i think i will not participate next year but because the dis yeah, there's a discount for the socks while the cal is going on and it's over the four months so what i'll do next time is i'll just wait until the fourth sock is released and if i like at least three out of four then again yeah i'll buy i'll buy the patterns while they're on sale and then make that those socks, that sock set on my own, not as part of the knit along, because there'll be less pressure. Because this kind of killed my sock mojo. I don't really know if I'm going to make any socks anytime soon. I had some plans for autumn socks, but they're all color work. And I think if I were to do a sock, I wouldn't want it to be color work right now. I think maybe lace, but maybe just stockinette to reignite the sock. Maybe a really good sock yarn that I love to reward myself. I don't know. So I think that's it for that. I'll put the cost of these uh, below. They were done using all the leftovers from the previous pairs. So here's the cost of the scrapbook socks. And then just for fun, here's the cost then of all four pairs in total. So that's what it costs to enter <laughs> or to, to participate in this net along. And then the cost of the patterns here on the side, they were all the same price. So. Final cost is what this um, adventure was like. Just in case uh, you were interested in that, I, I always kind of put that in my videos if you're new here. Okay, finished object number three. You have not seen this on the channel, you may have seen it on Instagram. Basically, while I was doing my test net, I had, especially towards the end, I told myself I was not allowed to cast on any more garments or like sweaters because then otherwise I'd be too tempted to work on these and not do my test net and be late. So what I could do was casting on like a scarf or a beanie and in the end what I did was I cast on a bralette. So I did the framework bralette by Jessie Maid, pattern and name here, and it was really fast to do. So I actually have this finished. So here's what it looks like. It looks absolutely tiny, that's because it has a lot of negative ease built into it. I did the size extra small and as you can see it stretches out. But honestly, I probably should have gone up a size, like small, or up a needle size, because I went down needle sizes. And I will talk about that in a bit. The yarn I used is Pigment and Ply, I think Merino Socks, so Merino and Nylon Blend. The color, um, colorway Maple of Many. And I talked about this in a, a previous video, I was planning to do the bralette because the yarn is heavily variegated, and I thought that it would still work with the design because the only design element are those vertical lines that like the framework bralette, that's what the framework is. And apart from that, it's all reverse stockinette, which looks like horizontal bars. And I thought that that would go really well with the hand dyed. The little Vs would be different colors and then the horizontal lines of reverse stockinette would go well with the... Um, horizontal color changes of the hand dyed and there was not really any pulling. I mean, you can see that blue line here, but I think that's at the back. Yeah, it's at the back. So the front of it is actually pretty even and not a lot of pulling. So I'm really happy with how the color worked out. In retrospect, I think this is looking a little bit too orangey for me. Uh, I guess you never really know what the um, hand dyed looks knitted up, it's it's really hard to visualize those things, but there's a lot of nice blue highlights and like navy, some peaches, pinks, 
and yeah, rusty orange. I said that this always reminds me of like a ship that's rusty, like navy but rust. The way that I figured out here was the back and the front is that I actually made the front and the back different and there's instructions on how to do that. The front cups are longer triangles and then the back cups are actually smaller. So here you can see that's the back one and you can see the front one. So that's because this one is thinner. You might be able to see more in the photos. I took some photos. It was really awkward and really weird because we're in October and I was out wearing a bralette. <laughs> My boyfriend was taking photos outside and people were kind of like walking by, walking their dogs and it was like, hello, hi, I'm a cool girl in my bra, taking some shots <laughs> for my YouTube channel. <laughs> but yeah, it's not the most seasonally appropriate thing to have made, but I think I'm going to be really happy to have it when it's like March. I mean, who am I kidding? It's going to be Scotland in March, maybe more like June. But it, I thought it would be good as a bralette. And here's the question that everybody is going to ask. Does it work as a bralette? And for me, yes, because I made it so small. So I went down a few needle sizes and I think I made the ribbing on 325 millimeter. No, 275. And then I made this on 325. And in the end, I really like the density of the fabric. I don't think that you want a loose gauge for something like this, but there's too much negative ease. It's kind of hard to put it on but while it's on it's so supportive because the ribbing is really really like cinching in and then the straps are quite sturdy it's double knit so it's not an eye cord everybody has been saying that sometimes they've been borrowing jesse made technique to make the straps on other tops and camisoles because it's sturdier than an eye cord and then I'm really proud of the way that I grafted everything. The way that Jesse made suggests you do the pattern is that you make like all of these straps the same length and you join them at the top of the shoulder. But I thought it'd be better to just make the front ones extra long and then join everything at the back. And I joined everything with Kitchener stitch, which was fiddly and annoying, but invisible, so rewarding. And again, I did everything with this top except grafting the straps. I left them on the needle and on the yarn was attached, blocked it, stretched those straps to hell and then gauge more, like I was able to gauge more appropriately how long they were. And so then I tried it on and I was asking my boyfriend to like use his fingers to attach them to the back. And I would tell him when it was just the right amount of like tight and supportive without digging into my skin or like being too loose so I had him kind of play around with how much slack he was using with the extra strap I had knitted up then when he found the perfect spot where I felt supported and comfortable I asked him to measure how many centimeters of knitting I had to rip to get to that length then I did that and then I grafted that so that's how I got my perfect strap length and it was very fiddly and annoying to do all of those finishing touches as opposed to the knitting which took like three days but then it was worth it and I'm happy with my strap length the other thing that was kind of not annoying but a challenge was to figure out what shape the cups uh, I wanted them to be because Jessie made offers a lot of customization options with the a lot of her patterns basically there's always customizations on like if you want to make things longer shorter cropped and even the shaping so here you have the like four triangles basically then she says that you can make the front and the back different and for example the front you might want them to be narrower and, and taller and that's what I did or what you could do is for example the back ones you could make them uh, shorter like this and it's all about the rate of increases and the rate of uh, the rate of decreases basically because you can decrease every row and then that will be very done very quick or you could decrease every other row or every fourth, every eighth, and that will change the shape of the triangle. So it's kind of fun to really dip your toes into pattern designing and understanding how shapes get constructed and the differences that those ratios can do for the shape of the finished item. And it actually does tell you, for example, like if you do such and such, you will, you will have a more plunging v-neck or if you do such and such, you will be more covered. So I really appreciated that because you knew what your modifications would do, obviously. And then the other thing was for the sizing. It kind of, it was a double-edged sword because I personally found it 
quite stressful to find a size because there were a lot of instructions on how to do to do that like different places to measure yourself you had your under bust your full bust your apex measurement which is kind of like the difference between your under bust and your full bust like in that direction and then she told you to add a certain length to that to know how much you would lose when you would put on the bralette you'd have that horizontal stretch so you'd lose vertical space all of that was explained which i thought was amazing like the pattern was really really well written it was just information overload and decision fatigue and the paradox of having to choose so many things so I found all of those things to be hindering and stopping me as opposed to the actual knitting experience, which I really enjoyed. You actually don't do a lot of purling because even, even though this is reverse stockinette, you're uh, working it from the wrong side when you're knitting the body. So it's all knitting uh, except that little slip stitch detail. So I really enjoyed the knitting experience of this top, but I didn't enjoy all the decision making that I had to do with that and how I still managed to somehow not make the right decisions because it was too tight. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, I wanted it to be, I would prefer it was tighter and a bralette than it was looser and basically unusable. Unless you wanted to make the body longer, in which case you then would have a camisole, which some people have done on Ravelry and it's great to see how versatile this pattern can be. So I would probably make this again. Now that I know the strap length I like, Maybe I would change the shaping of the cup, but I do think that this is a very flattering triangular shape for me. Not all triangles are created equal and not all necklines are going to be as flattering on you. So I, I quite like the coverage that this has given me as well as the support. And the only thing I don't like is just how tight it is at the bottom. So I think I would use the same needle sizes, but just do the size small instead of extra small, I think is what I would do. Maybe do the rib and then try that on, because I don't think I tried it on with just the rib. But this project is pretty hard to really get an accurate representation of what it will be like until it's completely done, because it changes a lot. Um, but the, the yarn I used is really nice and soft and comfortable. It is a superwash merino, and I would recommend that you stay safe when getting yarns for bralettes. It's probably best not to use non-superwash or woolly wools. I mean, everybody's built different, but I usually don't do superwash yarns, but I thought for a bralette, just, just do it. Just play it safe. So here's the total cost of this project. I have a little bit of leftover hand dyed, but overall not too much. I use less than one skein of fingering weight, so less than 400 meters. And yeah, I'll see what I do with the scraps because it's super wash sock yarn. I might use it as like, it could be like flowers in a color work sock, or it could just be like a contrast cuff or toe or something. I'll see, but I'm not in a rush to use it. It's fine to just sit in the stash for a little bit. Next project really quick that I finished is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Net. I will show it here and I also took some photos. My camera doesn't really like this color, it always kind of blows it out. But I will try it on actually. I didn't follow the pattern and I basically just had leftover yarn from a cardigan and then I just used all of it. So I, sorry, so I, I weighed how much yarn I had and then I started the increases and then when I reached a point that was kind of like the length, uh, the width specified in the pattern, I decided to make a straight portion and then I would start decreasing when I would reach a bit less than like the weight of the yarn so that I would have extra at the end. At first I kind of wanted to follow the instructions and like follow the, the measurements but then I decided to instead be guided by the yarn I had as opposed to the dimensions that I was aiming for, if that makes sense. And I'm really happy with the length. I'm really happy with the fact that I was able to gain a, a solid, oh, I can't remember, but it's on my Ravelry. I want to say 10 centimeters or I think maybe 10 centimeters of growth with blocking, which I didn't have to knit because it just, like the garter just stretched out to that. So this is Drops Air, by the way, in light gray. And I think it's perfect for this project. It's really squishy, fluffy. Uh, it's kind of a mottled, marled fabric, so it's not too boring. 
and I think it goes well with my skin and the coats that I have so I know that I will wear this a lot and because it really wasn't an expensive yarn or a hard project or anything I think I will not be scared of wearing this out as opposed to like my cashmere scarf which is only an occasions scarf this one is just going to be tossed around used to death in a good way so it's nice to have those projects that you just are not too like fussy or careful about so yeah Sophie shawl I know I said I wouldn't do it but I think this is more wearable than the Sophie scarf now do I think that both patterns should have been combined in one pattern absolutely but let's not get into the whole controversies around the Sophie scarf because first of all it's it's been a year now everybody has moved on from all of that so anyway that was my finished object and here's the total cost of this project as you can see not much that was two and something balls of drops air okay now we will move on to the works in progress i hope we're doing okay for time sorry by the way if my voice is a little bit nasally i have allergies and if i had to wait until i was feeling perfectly fine physically to film then you'd be never getting videos so we just have to do with what we have so the next work in progress or the first work in progress you haven't seen either and I actually have a swatch for that, so I'll get that first. Here's the swatch for this. This is made in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Fennel Seed, which I'm so, so, so happy to be participating in the hype that this shade and this brand have had. And it's for the Lakes Pillover by Ozetta. And, uh, ooh, let's see if I can remember. I think this one was made with larger needles at the bottom, and then I went down the needle size, and I think I preferred that one. Uh... Yeah, I think that one was a bit too much, but in retrospect, I feel like I'm always scared of going for a loser gauge, but I never regret having things at a loser gauge, or like I worry that it looks too holy and sloppy and see-through, but it never actually is see-through, because when you're looking it up at the light, I can see holes in this, but when it's on my skin, I never do see my skin, so I think I need to trust myself more and go for more loser gauge things to avoid like too much stiffness. Okay, so the other thing that I did experiment with in this swatch is that I went down the needle size on my pearl rose because I was burned by my previous saddle shoulder design that was the Joan sweater where I was rowing out a lot in the flat part which was half of the sweater and then in the round it was fine and I thought this time don't take chances just go down the needle size when you're doing your pearls and the way that I did that was that I have my circular needle so one end of it I have the needle size I need and then the other end of it, I have one size smaller. And because of when you're knitting flat, you're always alternating which needle is like the working needle, which is the one that you're like wrapping your yarn around. That's the important size. The one where the stitches are coming from to get fed into your knitting, that one can be smaller. And it's actually recommended sometimes, especially if you're a tight knitter, to have that yarn, that, that needle on the left side, if you're like knitting the normal way. If you're a tight knitter, it might help you to have that one be a size smaller because then you'll make the stitches come to you more easily. But anyway, so I... And I'm talking about that when you're doing circular knitting. If you're doing uh, flat knitting, then it does matter if you go down the needle size. So just something to keep in mind. So I was happy with this swatch. I went down the needle size than what the pattern recommends because I'm using a worsted way as opposed to iron, I believe. Not quite sure what the lakes is, but I had seen some people use this yarn for this project. Not using too much yarn. I bought the yarn on sale. I thought it was a match made in heaven. And because I really, really wanted to get back into the saddle shoulders, I absolutely love my Jones sweater. It's so comfy. It's so style, like not stylish, but just like, it's the vibes I go for, like boyfriend sweater, like sporty, oversized, like I'm just chilling. I love it. That's me. And I'll show you what I've got so far. So here it is. We have a yoke. And I've, I've split for sleeves and I've done actually quite like a few centimeters, a few inches actually, I would say, under the sleeves. So you would say I was flying through that, but I, I stopped. So I, the way that you do this is you do the shoulders first and then you do the back and then you do the front. So kind of a, like you do the, sa the, the, the saddles first, then it kind of follows the steps of a drop shoulder, which I'm very familiar with and I really like and it's addictive, but there are quite a lot of ends to weave in because of the saddle, but that's fine. 
I then picked up for the neck and it all went wrong here because I wanted to be very fancy. I did a pearl round, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Because I really like it on some of my sweaters and I just, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it, it's actually not bad, but I feel like it's too chunky. But actually, that looks fine. Because I really, really do like the big chunky colors that look very like a statement you know like oh something is happening i don't know what i'm trying to say but i really do like it in theory so i, I tried to go for that and the length specified in the pattern is quite big and i followed that i just added a pearl row but now in retrospect i'm thinking do i want to rip it out and do a a double folded a double a double knitted folding edge on smaller needles and make it less rows so that it's not as tall i think maybe it's because the yarn is very stiff and it sticks out i don't know now i'm having second thoughts because what i was doing was that i put this on ice because it was bothering me and making me feel annoyed and while that was happening i was thinking maybe i'll just like rip out the neck before continuing after i filmed the podcast and then once I would fix the neck, I could keep going. But now I'm wondering, do I just keep going, block everything, and then if I don't like it then, I'll rip it out and change it to a smaller thing? I think I'm going to do that instead, because maybe I'm just uh, say, like claiming defeat too soon, and it actually, I would, I would be happy with that once it's actually blocked and relaxed. I think I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to let it relax, because I haven't given it the full chance to show its worth. I guess I'm not like the happiest with my pickup edge at the neck, it's a bit sloppy. I've recently seen a video where someone talked about doing a crochet reinforced edge and then you pick up from that crochet edge. So I think what I'll do is I will block it, try it on and blah blah blah, and if I don't like it more than 90%, I'll rip the entire neck out, do that crochet edge, and do the neck band smaller is what we're going to go for. Cool. Well, doing this podcast is always very helpful to make decisions on my knitting. But yeah, so I think then that means I'm going to just keep going on the body and do the shoulders and everything. I am loving this pattern writing so far. The other saddle shoulder I did, I didn't find as clear as this saddle shoulder. So, so far, I would recommend Ozetta's pattern over Gregoria Fibers. Personal preference, obviously. Take those words as you want. I also really like that yarn. I've, I've actually really, really been enjoying working with the Heavy Merino and it got me like online shopping. Knitting for Olive was having a sale recently, which actually they've never done before on their own website. So I actually bought one more sweater quantity of the Heavy Merino for a sweater number 20. And I don't have the yarn yet, unfortunately, I guess because it's traveling from a bit afar. So I will not be showing it here, but I'm hoping to make this big cable jumper maybe this year, hopefully, that could be my cabled winter jumper, although there's a lot of cable jumpers I want to do. But I got it in this really cool pink color, which I normally, I don't think I've bought any pink sweater yarn. So that's a first, but I thought I would be experimenting. So anyway, all that to say, loving the Heavy Merino, it is really dry. People have always said that. The last time I worked with Heavy Merino, I was holding it with a mohair, so I didn't really feel it was that dry, but on its own, it is so dry and I just feel like I always have to moisturize my hands afterwards. And I, I, do, I do really like it though. Like it's not an annoying dry. It's just like a fun, weird dry. Okay, the last thing I want to say about this pattern is that I, I chose to do size small. Normally I'm kind of between extra small and small. And because my gauge, my gauge is usually loose, I'm at risk of having bigger garments than I want. So I usually do size extra small because it kind of gives me small measurements. Worst case scenario. And best case scenario is that it fits me. And... This time I thought, just go all in, do the size small because I always am happy with the size of my garments, but sometimes I'm like, I wish I had gone for the very oversized. Like I wish I had committed, taken that leap of faith. I see people who are the same size as me, who on purpose knit a size large or medium, not because their gauge is off, just because they want a large sweater size on their small size. And yeah, I, I, I wish I had the guts to do that but I always feel like, oh, it's going to look weird or I'm going to look like I'm not wearing the right sizing for me and it won't be cute. So 
this time I'm, I'm trying to go for oversized and so far it doesn't look massive but I'm sure it'll block out and stretch out but maybe next time I'll go even a size bigger for a different sweater maybe the, the drop shoulders could be quite cute being very oversized but a saddle shoulder I think the saddle actually does matter where you wouldn't want it to be too too long so I think that's it for the legs pullover there's a, a mini cal going along that I'm organizing where I said if you're intending to make that sweater or um we're making it at the same time, you can message me on Instagram and I guess you can still do that if you want. We have a little group chat going on on Instagram where people have shared their tips or their progress and it's been kind of nice knitting along with friends when we're all doing the same sweater. I feel like every time that I watch a podcaster and they say that they're doing something that I was just planning to do, I always get that like, oh my god, me too, oh my god. And so I really wanted to recreate that feeling and knit the same project as other people and that we could talk about it, but it's really informal. So I think that's everything for that sweater. I can't think of anything else. I'm happy that I came to a resolution on what I'm going to be doing regarding the neckline. And I'm happy that I don't have to rip it out just now and I will just keep doing the body. It was bringing a lot of joy while I was just flying through all the steps. And then since adding the neck, I was feeling down. Which is why I was kind of, maybe I should still like rip it out because it, it is making me not like as excited about this project as I was before. Okay, I'll post this video on Monday anyway. Maybe I will have already made a decision, but let me know if I should rip out the neck or block it and see. What would you do? Okay, next project will be a very quick one. And I, I think I've been talking about like this pattern every episode for the last five episodes, but it's the Oslo hat by Petit Knit and it's the charcoal version. I've just finished a Sendless Garden Sunday version. This is Phil Colana Arweta held double in charcoal. And I've just finished the body and I'm about to start decreasing. I had started decreasing and I went to see a friend and we were knitting together at a cafe and then I was making mistakes. So I just like gave up, tinked everything back and then now we're back to where I started at, at the decreases. By the way, very important note, there's a mistake in the original pattern at the decreases. It skips the steps or like it has a typo where it doesn't say knit one at one point. So I rewrote the instructions corrected in my Ravelry project page. So check that out if you're intending to make that hat. Or you may have noticed it yourself or you may have done the right thing yourself because your mind filled the gaps. I feel like if you don't overthink it, you probably would have done it right anyway. But if you're the kind of person that actually reads every single instruction, then it's wrong. So anyway, uh, this hat is for my dad. I'm doing the size medium and I shortened the brim a, a tiny bit and then I shortened the body a fair amount. Not a huge amount, but some amount. Because he didn't want to have too much slack at the top of the hat. And then I will also embroider a Belgian flag at the brim once it's finished. I have already made this hat and had sent it in the post for my dad, but he never received it. The post lost it, which is very sad. So I won't talk about this, I guess, any much more because he we, we already covered everything. So here's the the crown folded. Yeah, so almost done. I feel like I'm going to be finishing this basically uh, in a in a day if I knit on this all day today or in a couple of days if I just use that as like my... Maybe I'll do that while I'm editing this video is I'll finish this. I think I'll do that because that's quite good just like mindless. Although that's how I made my mistakes earlier with the decreases. So maybe I won't. But anyway, I'm trying to modify the pattern so that I don't need three kinds of Arweta and just two. So I'm trying to really play around with the, the decrease, the um, rows before the decreases to see what's the max amount of rows I can do before I have to crack open a third skein. Lastly, some people have said that they prefer the pattern to be done with a provisional cast on that you then unzip and knit together with your live stitches to have that folded edge but I think it's fine enough with just casting with a long tail cast on and then picking up those stitches what I would recommend is that you mark that first stitch with a stitch marker so that when you fold it when you fold the edge you know that you're not crooked and maybe to give you more confidence you could put a stitch marker like at the first and the middle and the side like quadrants 
then you fold it together and knit that together and you know if you've made a mistake along the way so I think that's what I would do to avoid the columns of stitches being like jagged and crooked I think that's it for the Oslo hat okay so because we're reaching about an hour time I will quickly flash through some teasers for what I'm gonna talk about in episode 18 in the future in a couple of weeks I promise and it's very exciting. So the first thing that I did is I, I made a gauge swatch and it won't be in the color that the pattern is going to be in, but I had left over. So this is Cardiff Cashmere Classic in the same color that I used for my little Lolu shawl. And it's the color Scarlatta, I think 714. I love this shade of red. I think it's really, really pretty and flattering on basically everyone because it's like a true red. And I wanted to swatch with cashmere because I'm going to be making the Elizabeth blouse by Petite Knit and I didn't want to crack into my uh, dark blue Cosmo skeins in case I would run out while I was using the pattern and I had a bit of that left over so that's what I would do if you have leftovers that are like less than five or ten grams is make swatches for future references and I, I, I used my bamboo needles and I went down a needle size so I think this is done on 3.75 let me just check. Yeah, I've done this on 375 bamboo needles. I may have done that same trick where I did a size even smaller for the pearl rounds because there is a fair amount of flat knitting because of that kind of v-knit neck that you get. So I think I, I tried to do that. Uh, I think I still have the needles, so I can check. And I... I'm not... I love, obviously, how this feels. I think the tension is not the best and I don't know what I can do to change that it's just a bit wonky I don't know if you can see this or if it's just in my head but I just feel like it's not the neatest stitches and I was in my mind imagining a really really neat piece but because my yarn will be dark blue it might not matter it'll be super drapey and ugh I can't wait. This was going to be my reward cast on after finishing my test net. I thought I'd cast on the Elizabeth blouse right away, but I thought maybe, I don't know, I'm still feeling like, oh, maybe now is not the right time to cast on. I'll save it for later. But I really need to stop hoarding those good nets because I bought the yarn to use it and there's no better time than right now. So there's really no reason not to cast on this nice fancy project. Okay, the next thing that I've cast on already but I put on, on hold for a bit is the Lana Vest by Irene Lynn. I was saying that this was in my plans for a while. I have this yarn for it which is a uh, Cascade 220 non superwash in Walnut Heather. And I wasn't sure if it was a good color because it was like in the middle between the dark cable and the light cable I just thought is that weird to go for a medium tone but I'm really liking it now that I've cast it on and let's just consider this my big gauge swatch because I didn't actually gauge swatch for this I thought that the gauge swatch would be in the cable pattern but the instructions are just say to swatch in stockinette which I thought was odd because there's no stockinette in that pattern and to be honest, so I think the pattern is for Aran, but I'm using worsted, so I went down a needle size. I'm doing this on 4.5. Let's check. Yeah, I'm, do I'm doing this on 4.5, and I'm worried that it's too loose, but I haven't seen this, I haven't looked at it in a while, and now that I'm looking at it, I think it's great. So here's what we have. That's great, so symmetrical. This is gonna be the back. I'm making the smallest size actually. And I said I wouldn't be doing this and talk about it at length, and I'm already giving you all the details. But basically, uh, I was gonna cast this on and then Ninette's Amy uh, contacted me and said she was also planning to make that vest and she didn't have access to her yarn right now because she was in Europe and would I wait for her? So I said, of course, I'll wait for you and then we'll both do it at the same time and that'll be very exciting. We have very similar tastes. We both did the cutar top at the same time last year, which was quite fun, or like this year, this summer. It was really funny seeing her give her impressions and her notes while I was also making mine and giving my notes. So here we'll both be doing that. And she said she'll do it, uh, she'll come back in a week. So. I'll be picking this back up. I actually should have taken this opportunity to actually block this. I might just do that. I might put this in the water tonight 
and then by the time it's dry, I'll measure it and adjust anything if needed. I probably won't need to, but I think maybe it'll just be fun to see those cables relax and give me a better feel of what the, the drape of the fabric will be like. I really like Cascade 220. They have an amazing color selection. They have so many. It feels good in the hands as you're working it. It's not too dry. I know that it doesn't overly grow, which for example, Malabrigo Rios, which is another worsted, grows insanely. Um, originally, I wanted to make the single mount for my boyfriend in Malabrigo Rios, and then we decided against it and we used Cascade 220 instead, and he really likes that jumper. It's really nice for actually, yeah, like uh, textured stitches. His one had a lot of knits and pearls. This one has like this rice stitch, which is absolutely lovely. Maybe this would be a good yarn for the uh, Crebea's new pattern, the stick season sweater. I think it would look amazing in those, like the stitches would look really good in this yarn. And yeah, if you have access to Cascade 220, I say <clears throat> go for it. It's like a workhorse yarn that can get you a long way. And you can also hold this with a second strand like mohair or alpaca silk or brushed alpaca to give you a nice iron way if you want it but it could just be on its own as a light worsted DK it really depends on your needle so I'd say it's quite a versatile yarn but yeah I guess that was pretty much all there was to say about this lana vest so maybe I'll just put a timestamp in the video and this counts as its own section and then okay this this one will really just be a teaser and I will not talk more about it but I've also casted on a project this weekend and I've been so obsessed with it I cannot stop knitting and I'll just wait until next podcast to tell you about it because I would rave about it for hours if given the chance. So I'll flash this on screen and you'll just have to wait for a couple of weeks. It's stunning and look at that, it's detachable. Okay, that's it. So now I'll talk about a couple of acquisitions because there were a few this month. I know I said I wouldn't this autumn because I'm knitting from stash and then wouldn't you know it, there were a bunch of sales that I said if they happened I would buy. So I bought some knitting for Olive because it was their like first ever sale and I was really loving the heavy merino so that came at a bad time. And then um, Lore went on sale which I absolutely loved working with in my uh, Haley slipover test knit. Absolutely loved it. I heard lots of things from people that like have used it as well and they love it too. So I bought some more and you will be shocked at this color because I just said I never bought pink. Oh, it's so pretty. I bought four skeins, which is a sweater quantity for some of them. I've made a little list of like sweaters that use four skeins of lore and so I don't have a, a huge, strong vision of what sweater this will be, but I have a short list. And this color is called Passionate, and it may appear redder on some screens, but I actually have a, um, a shade card that uh, the fiber company had sent me in an order, so I knew what to expect, which was great. I really recommend having shade cards if you are able to order some or... Um, yeah, if, yeah, I really recommend shade cards. So this is a nice ruby red, raspberry red, I don't know. It's a woolen spun DK, but it can act as a worsted. And what I'm thinking for this is maybe the Ducat by Kate Davies, and I'll put that on screen, or maybe the Everyday Sweater by Andrea Maori, which is actually made in a sport way originally, I think. So I may have to do a size smaller because of this huge yarn. Um, and also thinking I could do the um, Dad Sweater by Emily Curtis from Gentle Chaotic Knits. Because they also use Force Kinds. So yeah, Force Kinds of Lore, it was on sale. Otherwise it's a little pricey. So it's not something that I would buy a full sweater quantity without a sale. But... I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm so excited about this color because it really isn't something I have at all and I wanted to see if it's something that I end up liking and the reason why I don't have it is because I've never tried it as opposed to because I don't like it. You can see I'm getting really red 
Um, I, I don't know. It gets like that sometimes, but... But anyway, getting as red as... I think that this color will bring the red out from my face, but in a good way, like healthy red, as opposed to sometimes I'm way too pale. Okay, and very lastly, before I go, there's uh, Ching Fiber, which is a hand dyeing company based in London, I believe, that do amazing things with colors and with bases. They have so many bases, lots of different weights. Like if you need hand dyed for a sweater, they have you covered. And they do really, really fun things with color. Like a lot of the stuff, I, I don't give it a second look because it's just way too out there for me. But some of the stuff is really nice. And they also publish patterns. And recently they did a sale for some kits that they had. And one of them was actually a sweater that was on my list. So it was like, oh, well, that's a perfect occasion. And usually for sweaters that have a lot of different yarn involved, I, I find that difficult to pick colors myself because the, because the possibilities are too endless. So having a kit is a good thing for me because they picked those colors out for me and I just really liked the aesthetic of those colors put together. So the kit was for a sweater from Andrea Maori, which is the pink velvet. And she actually was using Jing Fiber in her original sample. So the colors I picked are Moth and Cloud. And I will show you them together and then separately. Oh, yes! That is so great. Like, that is so me. That cl that cloud is insane. Because it has, it actually does have some neons. Like, there's a neon yellow and a neon pink in there. There's also some darker shades of, like, that purple, which I'm a little bit worried about. I hope it doesn't come and distract too much. And also, only one sky and feels like nothing. But you're using that in color work. It's a DK... Melted Baby Surrey, it's Surrey Merino Silk, 175 meters for 100 grams. So you really don't have a lot of meterage, but apparently it's enough. And then this one is uh, the moth color, and it's so pretty. It's like a blue-gray, and they're actually singles. So this is Superwash Merino Silk Yak. And it's actually 120 grams, as opposed to just 100 grams, so that's really nice. And it's 480 meters, and two of them is enough to make that sweater. So they're singles, and it's a fingering weight sweater, and it has that little color work done with a fluffy strand. I think it's going to be so nicely textured, and those colors go super well together and it was at a bargain. So it was, uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you, it was 60 pounds, 60 pounds for those three skines with free delivery and you're getting more than 100 grams. You're getting 120, so 240 grams. The pattern is not included in the kit and I guess, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Would you rather pay more for your kit and it included the pattern? And then that's actually a kit because it contains everything that you need. Or would you rather it was just the yarn and then if you wanted to use that yarn for that pattern, you buy the pattern yourself. But then also because you got this for cheaper than if the pattern was included, you can also get a different pattern and, and replace that with that yarn. I don't know. And I, anyway, I already have the pattern because I bought it on in, in one of Andrea Maori's birthday sales. So as you can see, I'm still very much heavily all into sales. I've actually recently gone on to Ravelry and tagged all of my new acquisitions that I've done with the word sale if I got it on sale so that I can see at a glance what kinds I got on sales and which ones I didn't. And surprise, surprise, majority of my stash is from sales. So it was good and reassuring. But yeah, I don't think I'll be making those sweaters soon which I know is not the best thing to do to buy yarn in advance too too much because then you're just like stashing it but I wanted to reward myself for the test net they were brands that are usually outside of the price range I feel comfortable with and that I could be I could get for a cheaper more reasonable rate or reasonable you know affordable for me people can price their yarns as in like as they see fit but I think that's it for me. 
I'm happy I was able to talk to you guys today. Like I said, my nose was a bit annoying and I hope it doesn't... I hope I'm not cringing too much when I'm editing this and realizing that I sound like a musical instrument. But I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. I can't believe we're almost at 20 episodes. It feels huge, but also it feels small because I've put out a lot of different videos. If you're a podcast viewer, I'd be interested to know if you watch my other videos as well, or if you're really just here for the podcast. Nothing bad at all about it if you are, if you're just here for the podcast. I'm honestly more of a podcast viewer myself as well, but there are some content creators that I really do like to watch anything that they do, so whatever video they have, I just like click on it anyway. But I'd like to know if you prefer my podcasts or my other videos, because I think the podcasts are always nice and normal to film and you know what to expect and it's just here's what I've been up to and then the other videos allow me to be more creative and a bit more really delve deep into some topics and chat at length about them as opposed to podcasts where I feel like if I go on a bit of a tangent sometimes it really does feel like come on bring it back to podcasts bring it back to podcasts but that is it for me as you can see I've been clearing off the needles a lot of those past projects like summer knits, test knits, and now accessories are getting done and we're really getting into all the autumn nail knits at last. I was waiting for this all September. I was so impatient and anxious to cast on all the plans I had set out and now I can finally do it and I'm casting on all of the plans I've been making and it feels really good. Like I feel really at peace with my knitting and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And the lake sweater, when I came into that hitch with the neck and I wasn't enjoying it as much, I put it down, cast on something new and ran with it. And that also felt really good to be able to do that as opposed to test knits or deadline knits where you can just put it down. So I'm looking forward to what the rest of October has to offer. And I hope that you're also feeling very excited. I think autumn and winter as knitters, we're just so happy about it. How could we not be? And I will see you soon for a future video. Oh, I forgot to mention, but eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed that there's a different intro and outro. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that last week I was struck with a bogus copyright claim f for the music that I was using, even though it was um, YouTube safe. According to the artist, there's companies out there that go and re-upload creators' musics and then copyright other people and claim that it's their own music. That happened to me. I put an appeal to YouTube saying that I actually could use that music. It took them a week to come back to me and said, actually, yeah, we agree with you. And they removed their claim. So I was able to put that behind me and that was a bit annoying and stressful, but I'm happy that they found it in my favor. But just to be safe, because I don't want to deal with that again, I, I just went in the YouTube library and picked their music because that way there's no way that this could turn against me. So I'm still annoyed that I had to change and I don't like change and I hope that you guys like it. It can be a bit jarring when your favorite creators like change their branding and I quite like having something that was consistent. So I'm annoyed I had to change, but maybe it's a blessing in disguise and maybe the new intro is better. And if not, I can always change it a third time. I just, I don't want to change it every time, but we'll see if I'm happy with it. If not, I might change it again. Let me know what you think. Do you like the new intro and outro music? But yeah, wanted to address it and then we'll, we'll just never talk about that again because, ugh, that was a nightmare. Okay, bye, see you!